Hi, welcome back. I'm Stephanie Sullivan Ruiz, and last time we talked about what HTML5 is and got started in looking at what it takes to add native video to our web pages today. So I want to continue from that point, and we had the Elvis Costello playing in the browser with controls. And now I want to add a couple things we talked about before. One is the poster attribute, because if someone isn't able to see it, we'd like to actually show them a little picture so that they don't get the ugly gray box. So let's have a look at that. First, we have to go to our images directory. And there we will find Elvis. And this is actually just a frame taken from the video. And I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a width and a height because if we, we don't have to add a width and a height, the browser will go ahead and do it. But the problem is if we don't add a width and height, then the browser does not know uh, exactly how much space to reserve and it is a bit of a performance hit. So if you tell it what to reserve ahead of time, it doesn't have to redraw the page and reflow everything and it's a lot quicker. So we're going to go ahead and put in our width and height and save. And let's go back and view this in Firefox where we were not playing before. Remember we had that lovely gray box previously like this. Now with this poster attribute, we at least have a big picture there for uh, someone to see. But they're still not getting our video and that's what we want. So let's talk briefly about what we need to do to actually get them to that stage to actually see a video that works on their device. So there's lots of terms out there. There's, you know, H.264 and AUG and WebM and FLV and just lots of things about codecs, compressions, containers, file formats, and it's very, very confusing. The terms get interchanged, and to be perfectly honest, way back when I started looking at this, I had to really do a lot of research because my head was swimming as well. So let me try to help you clarify this. The video format or the codec is actually the type of compression that's used on the video, and we'll look at what those are. And then the container is actually the file format, and that's the container for the actual video, all right? So it's, it's not quite as bad as it sounds. We're just using certain words interchangeably. So these containers or file formats can contain more than one codec or type of compression. Here are the common ones, flash video or FLV, this can contain H.264 video, VP6, Sorensen Spark, other things. MP4 container can actually contain MPEG-4 and H.264, and you'll hear those used interchangeably. AUG can contain Theora encoded video and some other rather obscure formats that you probably won't hear a lot about. And the new kit on the block, WebM, that will contain a VP8 and that one is the one that we'll talk about in a moment, owned by Google and released royalty free. So how did we get where we're at? We're, we seem to be in sort of a video codec war. In the spec, the video spec is written and it has not laid out what type of encoding should be used for the video tag. It was left up to the browser makers to agree on a specific type. And that's actually what hasn't happened. So the first one that you're going to hear a lot about, and in fact, you're wrongly hearing, oh, over 50% of the web is now encoded in native video. Well, no, what they really mean is over 50% of the web is in H.264. And the reason for that is not because everybody is re-encoding madly to change the web. It's because Flash also, also plays H.264. So when you see stats saying, uh, oh, we've got, you know, HTML5 video, which is what they call it, is just taking off. Look at the actual chart. What you'll see is they're looking at H.264. That's played not only by, um, uh, for native video, but it's also played in an FLV. So this is a very standard video codec, but it requires licensing fees. And this is kind of the problem and the reason it's not adopted by everyone. It's excellent HD quality. It has hardware decoding. It's already included in things like Flash and QuickTime. They've paid these licensing fees. That's why you can use it there. Um, certain browsers have paid the licensing fees as well, but not all browsers are capable of paying those. Some of the browsers are open source, and they have opted for the Theora container. It's free, open, no licensing, royalty-free, lovely, but it's not quite as high quality. 
So there are the HD proponents that would like to keep the higher quality and don't really want to use the Theora. Then we've got VP8, and this is the one that was acquired, a company that was acquired by Google um, just this year early, and they've released this open source free of licensing, which is great. And when I saw this happen, I thought, this is our answer, right? It's good quality, it's probably going to uh, have hardware decoding added. And so this was like a big thing. Everybody started jumping on board. Who's going to support what? Hasn't quite settled out that way. One of the reasons is MPEG LA owns the licensing to H.264. It's a group. And Apple and Microsoft are members of that group. And they've already got a lot of technologies within their companies that use these. So of course they want to use it. But I'm not sure standardizing the web on this is going to work with licensing. We'll see. Now let's look at who supports what. Currently, Safari and Chrome support the H.264 and MP4 in a QuickTime container. If you use Safari on a PC, uh, you will actually have to have QuickTime installed to play native video. Mobile Safari also supports it. In the upcoming IE9, which is looking pretty good so far, people, I'm pretty excited, uh, they have committed to supporting H.264 as well. Um, but they've also said that they will support WebM uh, if the user has a VP8 decoder installed themselves. Now, since that browser won't be released till the spring, lots can change. Keep your eye on that. Anything could happen. But right now, that's what they've committed to. Firefox, Opera, and Chrome support Theora in an AUG container. Firefox and Opera will never go to H.264. They can't afford to. Chrome said, we'll support H.264. Sure, we'll support AUG as well. No problem. And then Firefox 4, which is in beta, Opera and Chrome are also supporting WebM uh, with VP8. And of course, Chrome jumped on that too because they're both owned by Google. That's all great. So if you want to see something in Chrome, you can encode it any way you want to encode it. It will play in Chrome. But for the rest of this, we've got to come up with a variety of strategies that will allow us to do this. So let's jump back to Dreamweaver. And let's look at what we need to do to actually add the various encodings that we need. Now, I have gone ahead and simply added a snippet so that we don't have to type all these sources. But notice this um, right here. This is a new element called the source element. It is only to be used as a child of uh, video or audio, never by itself. But this gives us the ability to remove the source from the video. And there we go, it's removed. And now I have three different sources right here that will actually encode it in H.264, in WebM, and in AUG. Now, the order that these are placed in is strategic. Um, the browser or the user agent will look at all of the different types, and it will say, which one can I play? The first one it finds that it can play is the one it will play. So you would think, since WebM may be the direction we end up going, that that would be the smarter one to put on top. But there's a bug in the iOS, or I believe it's the iPad actually, that will not play anything unless the MP4 is first. So unless you put the H.264 first in your order, it's not going to play on the iPad. So you're going to have to make that concession. There's another concession you're going to need to make. As much as we loved our poster image, once we move the source into its own tags, out of the video tag, the iOperating System 3 no longer will play anything because the poster attribute is in the um, video tag. That bug has been fixed in iOS 4, but right now iPads are still on 3 and a lot of the iPhones are as well. So let's go ahead and save this and see what we've got in Firefox. And now notice I've got controls and I've actually got Elvis playing in Firefox as well. It would play in Opera. So now it seems like we've got everything covered. I've got Chrome, Safari, Opera, Firefox, everything's playing with my native video. But who have we left out? I'll give you three guesses. We've left out Internet Explorer. Nothing will play in native video in Internet Explorer until IE9 comes out in the spring. It actually will support it. So now we're going to have to look in the next installment about what it takes to support IE6 through 8 and, of course, 
How will we do that using Flash? So join me next time as we look at adding in the fallback as well as a few other techniques you might want to use using native video as well. Uh, you can find my resources at W3Conversions, a lot of HTML5 and CSS resources, or follow me on Twitter at Steph Soul. See you next time.